If you're in Jersey and you can't cash flow, you're in the right spot. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Holden Wise TV. I'm James Wise. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help people like you. I'm going to help my Jersey folks out there get the cash flow you can't get anymore, right? It's freaking hard to cash flow on rental real estate in Jersey in 2021, dude. Pricing's through the roof. Taxes are through the roof, man. Uh, COVID restrictions, they're making everything tough, right? So what do you do? What does a Jersey investor like yourself do, man? What do you do, right? What is your options? Well, you could do what my man Our Money has done. You could expand, expand your business, expand your thinking, expand your horizons. Just because you live in Jersey doesn't mean you have to only invest in Jersey, dude. There's more to life than freaking the Jersey Shore, y'all. This is 2021. You don't have to be within walking or driving distance to your rentals, man. You guys are trying to become entrepreneurs, business owners. You need to hire staff to physically go on site to your rental property. So why does that staff have to be local to you? It really doesn't, right? Our money's gone to the Cleveland market because the prices are ridiculously cheap. And we're going to go into a property today, and you're going to see those numbers, and you're going to be like, holy crap, he ain't lying, right? But here's the thing. When you uh, go to new markets, when you hire people, you run into issues when you don't know what's going on, right? A lot of people think you got to stay close because you know the market. You know what's going on. You're a Jersey investor. You understand Jersey pricing. You know what's a good neighborhood, a bad neighborhood, this or that, right? If you're going into these new markets, you're not that familiar. That's what this show's about. That's what this channel's about. That's what Holton Wise TV is about. Giving you guys an insight into the business, into the Cleveland market, into other things like that. In the most crude, rude, and original, authentic way possible, folks. The good, the bad, the ugly. We do it all. If you can get on board with that, if you can watch some messed up stuff and go, yeah, man, that's for me, hit my team up. Sales at HoldenWise.com. Give us your number. We'll talk to you how you can get a series of customized videos just like this one that I'm doing for our money. Now, pro this property, our money, you sent it to me. It's a duplex. It's just like uh, the previous duplex I looked at for you, right? The uh, the 2978 West 32nd one, right? You asked me, you're like, yo, which one of these is better? I don't think it matters, dog. It's the same. Same neighborhood, pretty similar layout. Uh, this one gets a little bit more rent, but the other building looked to be a little bit nicer. So it's six to one, half dozen to the other player. I don't think it matters. I think you should put in offers on both. And I think it's unlikely you'll take both of them down because there's so many people bidding on these particular properties right now because, as I just got done talking, it's really friggin' expensive in New Jersey. And guess what? I say the same thing to my investors in Oregon, Colorado, Denver, Seattle, Washington, all up and down California, right? A lot of people are living in areas where it's really friggin' expensive, man. So you got to try to get your hat in the ring on both of these, in my opinion. So let's jump into those numbers right after this commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's dive into the numbers, man. Let's get up into these numbre unos. Three, four, four, nine. Aaron, Cleveland, 44113. Two days on the market, 95K. Don't think you're buying it for less than 95K. As a matter of fact, I can't even tell you if 95K will take it down. There's going to be a lot of people making offers on this because it's a friggin' cash, friggin' cow, dude. Existing rents, 1250, 650, and 600 long term tenants, okay? Gets better, though. Market rents, way higher, 850, 750, 16 hundo a month, dude. After fixed and variable expense estimates that you should normally account for as an astute real estate investor, I think you'll pull down an NOI of 9628 If you could pick it up at the list price, at the $95,000 list price, that would be a $23,750 down payment, a $71,250 mortgage. It would project out to a 25.4% cash-on-cash return. Now, that is, of course, 
going under the assumption that you can get the current rents at twelve fifty a month up to the market rent at sixteen hundred a month without a turnover. Right? Because if you have a turnover, you'll have to pay more money. That's just how the game works, folks, right? Like we got some tenants up in here right now, right? Long term tenants, they're paying rent. You don't want to kick them out, right? Because you see what's going on here? You don't have to like make repairs or fix anything, right? Like you see this like ocean blue carpet? All right. This ocean blue carpet right now, today, with this dude who lives there with the ocean blue carpet, that ocean blue carpet costs you zero dollars as a real estate investor. But if homeboy moves out, you bet your ass you ain't putting a new tenant in a motherfucking house with ocean blue carpet and getting market rate rent. That's just not how this shit works, man. You're going to have to, of course, redo the unit, right? Probably 10K minimum, right, to get it totally ready for market rent. So the tenants that are in there, even though their rent is a little bit lower than what we'd like to see, what market rate is, don't think of them as liabilities. They are assets, right? They are saving you money because you don't have to do that turnover. You don't have to get rid of the ocean blue carpet, right? You don't have to repaint these walls, which are, I don't know, some other color of blue, okay? You don't have to spend that money. So what I like to see investors do is go up slow on the rents, especially with these people, right? You're making a, enough money out of this to cash flow as it sits, dude. I recommend you take the property over, do a one-year lease, right? You do a one-year lease at the existing rents. Be like, hey, man, new management's coming in. Don't think we're going to jack up your rent, kick you out. It's all good. Just sign here, same rent. Sign you up for another 12 months. You don't want any rental increases? Let's do it, right? Then you get them on the Holton Wise terms. So if there's ever any issues, evictions won't be additionally delayed uh, by having tenants who are claiming they didn't know they were supposed to pay the new management company, right? When tenants don't pay rent, they come up with every excuse in the book to delay the case. Every time you delay the case, that's another friggin' seven, $800 out of your pocket as a real estate investor, right? Because uh, we charge you every time we got to file and go to court, right? So delays are friggin' bad for you, right? So you want to get the tenants on the, uh, the new lease as soon as humanly possible, and you want to keep these tenants in these units as long as humanly possible. So that is the best way to do it. Then after that 12 months, Maybe go up 25, then another 25, and then try to work yourself up to that long-term market rate without having to replace said ocean blue carpet, right? Because ocean blue carpet, right now, you don't have to do nothing with it. Once you got to replace it, man, that's money out of your pocket, right? As for this neighborhood, so everyone's aware, it's a D-grade neighborhood, okay? Now, if you're out of state, you're looking into new markets. You're probably like, is this good? Is it bad? I don't like to say good or bad. I like to say A, B, C, D, or F, right? Google the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. Go to HoldenWise.com. Check out the ultimate guide to grading neighborhoods in our tools and resource section. Hell, you could probably click the show notes of this video, and I'm guessing my dudes have put a link to it. If they didn't, they probably should because that's some important-ass shit, right? Graded all the neighborhoods in Cleveland on an A to F scale. Based on risk, okay? My opinion, there ain't no such thing as good or bad. There ain't no good property. There ain't no bad property, right? There's good or bad deals, right? Any property can be good at the right price at the right time with the right financing for the right investor. Likewise, any property can be bad with the wrong price, wrong time, wrong financing, wrong investor, okay? It's all about a risk-reward thing, right? So this is a D-grade neighborhood. I have made a killing in D-grade neighborhoods in Cleveland. Long term, these two tenants, they're not Section 8. want to keep them in there as long as possible. They're currently paying. They're proven commodities. But the moment they go bad, they get uh, removed uh, from the unit, they move out on their own, this or that, we want to focus our efforts on bringing in new tenants that are Section 8 approved because that will alleviate risk that a D-grade neighborhood has, the biggest risk being vacancy because your tenants didn't pay rent and evictions are friggin' expensive. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.